Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new video here on the channel. We did it. We finally surveyed 100% of the planets on Starfield, all 120 systems. And today I'm going to share with you my tips and tricks in case you want to do the same. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Hopefully it's helpful. If it is, go ahead and press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get into the video. Alright, so in Starfield there are obviously a ton of systems. The exact number is 120. And you can tell how many systems you've explored by going here and pressing B to get into your status effects. Go to exploration and here's systems visited. Planet scans, planets fully surveyed, landed on etc so as you can see I have 120 and the planet scanned was 1691 it's a lot of work it really is it took a lot of time to go through and fully survey those but all is not to be lost I've got some tips and tricks that'll help you if you do want to embark on this endeavor if you're you know crazy enough like me whether it be for the achievement or just to say you've done it uh, either way these tips should be helpful the first thing i, I kind of want to let you know is that with bugs as it stands it's really not possible to do unless you're really really lucky um the reason being is on beta marie one the fauna isn't the last fauna isn't possible to find it's a fish uh, however there's no oceans now you can look for deep water well pockets and more than likely you won't find any the only time people have verified being able to find any is when the game bugs out and they're above land somewhere randomly trying to go that route and survey them can be impossible you're basically waiting for the game to glitch out and happen to be at the right spot um, the other option is cheat you can spawn them in and do that however you will not get the achievement mostly there is a mod that allows you to cheat and still get achievements if you want to go that route that's perfectly uh, viable you can do that me I just didn't care about the achievement wanted to do it for the you know just to be able to say I could so that's a big problem on completing it there is a second problem which is on Masada 3 there is an ocean creature that also may not spawn People have spent hours and hours at each coast and haven't located it. You might have to cheat for that one as well or, you know, spend days trying. That's certainly up to you, however you want to go through that. And I'm going to list off a couple other planets that have uh, maybe not issues, but people seem to have trouble locating the stuff. So what you want to do is land at neon not liqueur but actual neon and you'll be on this platform here all you have to do make a run and jump off the side so that will take you to the ocean now the other thing is as you're swimming away from here and you're surveying you're not always going to see creatures at the surface you may have to look down you might get lucky sometimes but for the most part I found they're deep down so as you're going through you definitely want to make sure you're looking down instead of just straight so the next planet I want to talk about is Charbitus 3 I think that's how you say it there is another bug where the last fauna, probably the last fauna you'll need, is a ghost grazer. The best way to deal with that is to simply land somewhere in the north, the arctic shelf or whatever, up here. 
So I just land at a random spot. Come out just a little bit. Okay, we look in the sky. We see nothing. So the next thing we want to do is just do a quick save. Wait for it to do its thing. And then we want to load that quick save. So let's confirm loading. It definitely worked when I went to uh, actually scan this fauna. Ah, see, there they are. So, yeah, once you've done that, you just rinse and repeat. Keep uh, landing on different spots, and then quick saving and loading your quick save so that you can get those. I don't know why that fixes it, but it does. Okay, so for the next planet where there's a bit of an issue or confusion is Ixel 2. So when you come here, you'll see this retreat, and you'll see this cave, but it won't say cave, it'll say unknown. Uh, one of the creatures that you need, one of the creatures that you need only spawns in this cave. So once you're there, you just kind of run through here to get inside of there. Once inside, you'll be able to locate the glow hands. See, right there, pack glow hands. The only place you can find them on this planet is in this cave. So you'll definitely want to check this out to be able to survey this planet completely. Alright, so the last planet I want to go over is Ptolemon 2. You may or may not have seen these guys around yet. They end up showing up randomly on just different planets. And they're kind of a pain. Uh, however, on Ptolemon 2, you actually are required to scan them. I think based on that, that this is their home planet, I guess you could say. And so they are a required fauna for this planet. Alright, so one of the biggest things I've seen that causes issue is ocean creatures. You can tell if there's creatures in the ocean by when you click on ocean, it says a percentage. If there was nothing there, it would not say anything. It would just say ocean. So in this case, we know there's creatures in the ocean. So how do we get to them? Well, the best way is to find a location that says coast. And it can be a little tricky. But there we go. Okay, so we see coast. So travel there. Sometimes you'll get lucky when you land and you'll see exactly where the ocean is, but in this case We can't really tell So what we need to do is go to the local map scroll out and look for flat area So as you can see this is all hilly, etc. This is flat area. So I'm gonna ping my thing over there And then when I come back out look for this little square that's on the top of my mini map now, the coast is not only good for finding ocean creatures, but if you have a place, even if there are no ocean creatures, if you have a place that has a coast, try going there first. And the reason I say that is because the game seems to not know exactly what to spawn on the coast. So in cases like that, you may find fauna or something that is kind of hard to find anywhere else. So I always suggest going to the coast first. Once you've done that, you can then, you know, go through, try to scan what creatures you need, etc. Uh, but to the main point, once you've made it to the ocean, you always want to check, is the ocean safe or not? So the way we can check that is by going to the map. And if you look over here, it says water safe. 
If it's not safe, you don't want to go in because it can kill you quickly. But if it is safe, feel free to go in and you won't have to deal with any of the uh, other creatures. And then you just jump around and look. Now the thing about scanning is it doesn't matter what the range is. So even though that's close, I can scan it. But if it wasn't, and I see it, if it was 100 meters out, etc., you can still scan it, just like flyers. You can scan them outside of your range. Okay, another thing to mention is when you're looking for planets, it can be daunting, obviously. There's a lot. Um, but... The ones that seem to get missed a lot are outer edge ones. So make sure you scroll all the way out and you try to go down, etc. as far as possible. Uh, commonly these two systems are missed. Um, but the biggest miss system, uh, well, it's a little tricky. So as you can see, all of these systems you can tell pretty easily. However, there's one that you can't. So if you look right here, which is above Tal Ceti, there is a system right here, Fan Man and Star. It's the only system that is basically tiny, so it can be very hard to find. All right, let's talk skills. Obviously, some skills are gonna be useful, some skills are not. So, the science tree is definitely what's going to help you out a lot. Uh, astrodynamics is a good one that you'll want eventually. But the ones that we want to focus on first. We need astrophysics. Definitely do that. Because what that does is it lets you scan the planet. And each planet has, well not each, but... A lot of the planets have traits. Maxing that out allows a good chance for you to be able to just unlock the traits by scanning the planet instead of actually having to go through and find them. So it's definitely helpful to get that. The next one that you'll want to get is scanning. And the reason for this, and the reason you want to get it leveled up, is because it will tell you where specific resources are. So if you look at this map, you know, there's nothing really super rare here. But on other planets, you may have minerals that are really rare. And instead of trying to spend an hour randomly finding it, it'll tell you on here where that mineral is condensed and then you can just land on that spot and usually scan it within 30 seconds or so so it's definitely very helpful to have that the next two skills i would suggest are zoology and botany so what this allows is for you to scan them much quicker as you're going through and you're scanning fauna or flora I think at the beginning it takes eight scans, so you have to find eight of those creatures or eight of those plants. Well, as you rank up, you only have to scan four of them, which is going to save you a lot of time, especially on some of those more rare fauna that are hard to find. Only having to scan four is obviously better than having to scan eight. So after that, I mean, it really depends. You do want astrodynamics just to be able to go further, um, but it's not as important. Surveying uh, is helpful. It will allow you to scan a little farther with your hand scanner, but it's not that much of a difference, so I wouldn't rush that one. Um, the other things to kind of get to make it helpful so that you can do this quicker would be fitness, which raises your O2 level. 
and then after you get fitness a good thing to tie into that is boost pack training so with boost pack training and O2 regardless of the gravity I can pretty much get through anywhere without using my stamina or my O2 and that's particularly helpful uh, to keep going, keep searching, not have to slow walk, etc. So it's going to give you extra time. But there's also an added bonus on planets with low gravity. So with planets with low gravity, as you use your boost pack, you can get quite high up. And this is going to make it a lot easier to spot minerals and stuff like that. So this will definitely save you time on those low G planets. Other than that, uh, feel free to pick out whichever uh, skills. I do highly recommend getting piloting uh, as early as you can as well so that you can get class C ships. And you may be thinking that getting class C ships is a daunting task, you know, oh, so much money, etc not necessarily true you can steal a class C ship from the bad guys like eclectics and stuff like that the thing is uh, you have to have in space battles a good ship that will you know be able to knock out their systems you can go that route and as you do uh, you can level up targeting control systems. That way you can target their engines. They can't get away. You can dock them, etc. But there's a much, much easier way. I don't really have any here to show you. But a lot of times as you're going through, ships will land on the surface. And on these barren moons and stuff, it's pretty easy to, to see. You'll hear it. You'll get a marker on your map that is for a ship landing, etc. All you got to do is go to that ship, board it, kill the people on it, and it's yours. Now, there are some ships you can't board. Um, and obviously, if your piloting isn't high enough, you're not going to be able to take the ship. But if you get that to Class C, you can take basically any ship with the exception of like USC or USMC, whatever those ships are. Um, mostly you're going to get Ecleptics and maybe Varun. But the ship that I have is one that I stole from the Ecleptic and it can basically get me anywhere. And the point of having a Class C ship is so that you can upgrade the grav drive, etc. And be able to go to further places, which will definitely come in handy. So, if you don't want to go the route of building one, if you don't want to go the route of, you know, doing space battles, etc. Simply, you know, go to the ship landing sites when they occur on these maps and steal the ship that way. Okay, so as an example, here is the ship landing site, has that flag, uh, but in this case, it appears to be a starborn ship, which we can't take, but if it were a different ship, etc., you would just simply run up to it like I am, make your way there, and then if there's anybody on the outside, you'll you'll maybe want to defeat them but I suggest instead running straight for the ship and trying to board it because sometimes the captain will leave his people down there if you kill them or if you start fighting them and our goal here is to get the ship so you just go in take over and it becomes your ship one thing to mention though is a lot of those ships that you're going to steal have contraband. And if you don't know how to handle contraband, your best option is to find it. 
that was weird. Find it, go back on the planet, and drop it from your inventory. Because if you scan contraband when you're going to, you know, a settled system, then they're going to arrest you. So make sure you drop that contraband. Uh, alternatively, there are ways to get shielded cargo, etc. if you want to try to risk it. And there's places to sell it, like uh, I believe Crix is a good place to sell it. But I think for me the best option was just to find the item and drop it somewhere on the planet. All right, well that's that's it for for me. Uh, all the tips and tricks I have, hopefully they're helpful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. As always, thanks for watching.